Oh yeah. Oh my my. Whoa. Whoa, windbreaker. Oh my, New York City. Now listen, I never thought I'd be in a, an electric lawnmower guy, but we are struggling, frankly, to find a new lawn mowing company. Loved our old guy, his name was Matt. Never missed a day in three years at our old house, but it's just been tough. So what we decided to do is pick up this little Ryobi 13 inch for the boys. And okay, so here's a little flashback clip from about three days ago when I got back from the mountains. That was just a few clips from two days ago. And listen, I love running. I love you know having goals for races and accomplishing those goals. But at the end of the day, coming home to those boys working, a little sweat equity at the uh, new house. Oh, it made me so it made me so happy. I just had to I had to film it because it's really the first moment where we were passing you know real chores that actually helps the family in a big big way uh, here at the new house. You know, so they were knocking out the yard, but I decided to help them with the backyard because we have these steps back here and I just need to teach them, you know, the right way to get the, the lawnmower down to the, to the backyard. So anyway, move the camera a little closer. So the Asics Dynablast 2 going out for the first run today. Um, doubling today, went 15 miles, about just nice and steezy, 8, 10 a mile. And uh, I gotta say, the upper was very, very, uh, a nice surprise, and I, I, I enjoyed the Dynablast one, and this is, you know, I'll say a, a, the more affordable option to the Nova Blast lineup. If I had to choose, I would buy the Nova Blast over the Dynablast any day. But for a more affordable option, just a daily trainer, getting the miles in, it will do the trick for you. So there you go, Asics Dynablast 2 in for testing. Okay, let's, uh, let's go open this box from New Balance. Amazing, everyone. It's amazing. It's a uh, woo. You have goals at the beginning of the year, and then you put action items in place into your training schedule, and then you reach goals. Like you know, Pike Speak. Actually, okay. Shout out to Orea Media. It's O R E A Media on Instagram. He caught some photos of me coming down Pike's Peak, in action, almost falling. They're at they're epic. Go check out Orea. I'll try and remember to link to him in the description below as well. It's not the actual fall, that would have been crazy, but uh, I almost fell right when he was taking photos. So anyway, Orea Media, if you are new to the channel, let me just be very clear here. I'm a mountain runner who is aspiring to run fast on the roads, but I love my mountain running, my trail running, eventually ultra running, and but I still have goals to run fast you know, on the roads. So here's the deal. This is not a proper training block for road marathon. I want to be very clear about that. Let me repeat this, what I'm doing, it is a, I'm just going to call it 10 week training block. Okay. I raced the Pikes Peak Marathon on August 22nd, managed to pull out the W, 
flew to UTMB, had an active rest week at UTMB. I think I ran about 25 miles over in Chamonix. It was beautiful. Just kept the legs moving, but I was—I wouldn't call it definitely not hard training, but it wasn't complete rest either. I was, I was pretty active out there filming and just a little bit. I, I think I did like the, the longest run in Chamonix was like five miles, okay? Then I get back took four days off, okay? It was, you may have not even noticed on Strava, I think it was August 31st through September 3rd, all right? Day one, September 4th of this training block. Essentially, this is a nine-ish, 10-ish week. It's not ideal. This is not an ideal. In my, just when people ask me, what is, you know, how long should my training block be for a road marathon? I always say at least 12 weeks, preferably 16, Probably you don't need to go up to 18. Some people do. I've seen even some training blocks go up to 20, but I always say like 16 weeks, so basically four months is a good is a great amount of time to lay that aerobic foundation for your road marathon. So I fully realized going into this New York City marathon at the beginning of 2021 that it was gonna be tight. And frankly, I didn't even know if I was gonna get on the starting line. And you know, with a pandemic and everything happening in the world, everything's a little, we have to be flexible. All right, that's just the nature of the beast right now. So I'm excited. Here are some, I'm just, I'm just writing, I'm writing out, oh yeah, there's a little tip of the day. I do write out my training plan in pencil and then I go through and I erase and I, I adjust things and I move runs around. Um, my, okay, so here we go. I could talk for hours and hours about the details. Um, oh, what should I even say? Okay, mountain running. I'm still gonna be doing some vertical gain in this training block, everyone. Uh, what's the old saying? Uh, hill work is speed training in disguise. Was that Frank Shorter? I don't actually buy that 100%, but at the end of the day, I am getting faster, at least in the mountain running scene in the past two to three years. I'm getting stronger, old man strength, getting into the gym, whatever is happening, my times are getting faster, at least in the mountain running scene. And actually, I mean, I managed to run a 105.43 in Naples, Florida for the half marathon. That was a PR, just uh, January 2021. So I think I'm getting faster. We're about to find out on, yes, November 7th in New York City, which is not that far off, frankly. It's basically exactly two months away, which is very exciting. But my staple training, of course, in, you know, you'll, if you're, again, if you're a new subscriber, you're gonna find out very quickly I'm a big fan. I lean in the direction of aerobic engine building, aerobic base first, and then add as much speed as you can on top of that. But at the end of the day, if you don't have that base, uh, the base of the pyramid, I like to build the bigger the base for that pyramid, uh, the higher the peak can be, okay? Just think of the the pyramids outside of uh, Cairo, Egypt. If they would have made them another quarter mile wider, just think how much taller that peak could have been so the peak of the pyramid is you can run faster on race day at the end of the day all right that's just that's my philosophy that's how i've been training for decades i just i had to think about i mean i mean at this point it's been over two decades of training like this okay so some very specifics here and then we'll get you oh yeah we're going to open up this box from new balance as well here in a second so speed endurance long run progressions and mountain running. But for this train, for the next nine weeks, speed endurance and long run progression. That's gonna be my staple. I will mix in some interval training, okay? So what is an example of that? Three by 2K, two by one mile, one by 800, okay? Not even on a track, on, um, it'll be on the Highline Canal most likely. For those in debt, it's like a hard packed dirt surface. So three by 2K, two by one mile, one by 800. All right, with, you know, 90 seconds, 75 to 90 seconds rest. Now, what do I mean by speed endurance and long run progression? So what I'm doing is it's a jigsaw puzzle. It's alternating weeks. So for example, speed endurance is gonna start on September 28th. I'm gonna skip to, uh, and then two weeks later, October 12th, speed endurance. Two weeks later, October 26th, speed endurance. Alternating weeks with intervals starting on October 7th and then October 21st, okay? So they are um, 
different weeks there, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, different weeks. And then also mixing in three long run progressions. Once again, alternating weeks. So uh, September 24th will be the first long run progression. What do I mean by that? Throughout the long run, for this one specifically, 22 miles, um, I will slowly get faster and faster and faster. So probably start out at about 7.15 a mile for me up here at altitude. So 5,280 feet, mile high city. And then cutting down to, you know, seven minutes, 6.50, 6.45, 6.40, probably working my way down to about 6.20 to 6.25 a mile by the end of the 22 miles. And I will do that September 24th, October 15th, and October 29th. Okay, so three long run progressions. I will also be doing uh, long runs, okay? So just straight long runs. Oh, the bread and butter of my, ah, oh, I just love it. So that's, I'm, 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 my calculated risk, my, remember what did I say? I can't even ever say it the same. Uh, don't expect different results if you keep doing the same things, okay? In your training, all right? I did some different training this past summer leading into the Pikes Peak Marathon um running with a weighted vest and more so um more vertical i'm trying to remember what else but i did some things different and sure enough i managed to shave uh about three minutes off at least my ascent time up pike's peak which was very very exciting for me um yeah just was exciting so my long runs this training block i'm gonna bump it up from 22 23 to 24 maybe 24 and a half miles for and i'll probably do that I don't, I haven't actually nailed that down yet. Probably just twice. Okay. Cause again, it's only nine, it's only a nine to 10 week training block. I just want to feel, and this is maybe pulling a little bit from, gosh, is it Hanson's up in, uh, is it Michigan, right? The Hanson's distance project. I think, don't quote me on that, but they, I believe they are proponents of training kind of tired. And I'm not saying I'm a huge proponent of that, but I do think for the marathon, there is there can be some benefit to doing a long run at a steady pace. You know, I'm not talking like 6.20 a mile, more like, for, again, for me, probably like that 6.50 a mile range uh, up here at altitude. But doing the long run and just getting comfortable with being tired, let's say from mile 23 to 24, okay? Kind of the, the sweet spot for the marathon distance twice i'm thinking i, I still I'm, I'm leaning toward october 18th that's looking actually really good probably october 18th and november no 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 no. sorry 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 october 4th sorry october 4th and october 18th there we go okay oh and i know you would love to like man demoreglobalrunning.com we will develop at some point a calendar on the website where you can see the see the training um, laid out. Oh, it's just like, it's hard. To, it's, I, you think it's hard to run up Pike's Peak. It's really hard to build a website. So that's coming down the pike. Okay, comment of the day, question of the day, and then we will get this box opened up. Shout out again to New Balance. Okay, Weston Altman says, thank you, Weston. You get to comment of the day. He says, I'm pretty flush with shoes right now. I love that, flush. I'm pretty flush with shoes right now, mostly thanks to your vlog. However, again, thanks to your vlog, those Endorphin Speed 2 shields look epic. Might have to snag a pair of those. So that was yesterday's vlog where I asked the question of the day, what is the next running shoe you would like to purchase and why? All right, okay. Um, all right, here we go. Question of the day. Hmm, oh man, this is hard. All right, here we go. What's your basic philosophy around marathon training? So if you're a new runner who's uh, hoping to run a marathon in a year from now, two years from now, go down into the, into the comments and just read. You don't even have to comment. Just read what people are sharing. So you're overall, because I really, oh, marathon training, there's so many different ways to arrive at the starting line, fit, fresh, and healthy. And so I don't want, yeah, so I'm just excited. There you go, Come, go for it down below. It's gonna be good. Okay, speaking of the New York City Marathon, I think I know what's in here, but let's just find out together. Okay, here we go. Oh, hold on. All right, I don't, I don't have the uh, knife here yet. Oh, mama, here we go. Woo! And oh yeah, there it is, the New York City Marathon. 
50th anniversary commemorative shoe, the New Balance. I think this is the Vongo, right? It's got to be the Vongo. It actually does not say on here, but it, I think it's the Vongo. It's definitely a stability shoe. Bah, butter to the bread. So sweet in gold. I don't know if I'm going to be able to wear those outside. That is awesome. New York's, I might, I think I might be saving these for the long haul. Hey, yo. That's awesome. Training t-shirt, long sleeve. It's going to get chilly here in Colorado, okay? Long sleeve for New York City. Here. Oh, my, ma. Come on now. Come on now. Boom. Oh, my, ma. Whoa. Whoa. Windbreaker. Oh, my. New York City. Come on now. Oh, New Balance. You are just too, too kind here. Oh, man. Boom. Oh, oh, yeah. A singlet, I forgot about that, with some uh, cityscape on there, the New York cityscape. Awesome New Balance, love that. And it's still hot out here in Colorado, so that's gonna be perfect. Let's, oh, uh, shorts, oh yeah, 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 nice. Very good, shorts, five inch, you know me and five inch, but we will give them a go. There, I'll probably give, give those away, can you see that there? So thanks for tuning in. I hope that uh, gives you an idea of my training for the New York City Marathon 2021. It's going down. Oh, uh, group run is gonna be epic. It's gonna be epic. Friday morning in Central Park. You stay tuned for more details on that. All right, we will toss it to the 20, um, let me just think here, the 2019 New York City Marathon where I break down uh, either the race or the entire training block. If I can find the training block one, I'll do that one. Right here, right here, right here. All right, see beauty. Work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.